Hi, so it's Zoe here talking about the Celtic Sovereignty Goddesses who are my guides and have been my guides for um, setting up and founding of my business, Eru. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the Morrigan as a guide for traversing and transforming the dark spaces. So the Morrigan, I spoke a bit about her before, being associated with with darkness and so much of this has been uh, maligned to put her into spaces of what well, I don't experience her as anyway into spaces of um, kind of like this worshipping kind of cult like feeling around her um, which involves like sacrifice and ritual like that whereas for me, the Morgan has always been just so supportive of our our inner growth. And she is associated with the dark for me always. She's been my best guide for when I have needed to, to go there to those places and spaces within me. And when I say those dark spaces, I mean go into my fears, go into my trauma, go into my wounds, figure out which is what and what are they telling me? What are they... What are they um, waiting to gift me with, you know? So um, the Morgan, um, when you start to work with her also, and also when you're working with her, I always recommend connecting with her in your absolute sovereignty. So doing whatever you need to do, because these are sovereignty goddesses. They want us to be in our sovereignty when we connect with them. But doing whatever practice you do to call in your, your circle of light, your sacred space, um, completely grounded to the earth, connected to the divine, <clears throat> surrounded by your guides. Um, I call on the Morgan in the north, I call on Bridget in the east, I call on Eru in the south, and I call on Maeve in the west, and I surround them with the divine masculine counterparts as well. Um, so this is because there has been so much distortion and a distortion around the Morrigan and sometimes connecting with her so many so much other stuff has been created so you really want to connect with her in her truest form which is pure love pure service devotion to the to the earth's ascension um to the earth um she's a guardian of the planet and like all the sovereignty goddesses and they work with specific parts of our humanity really coming forward strongly at this time as we go through um this phase in our evolution and and you know they've been here before they've done it before so they're they're really the best guides in that way i see them like sisters so so the morrigan i when you start to work with her you know you'll really get tuned into working with her she speaks through the crow she speaks through the black feathers you'll find from the crow you'll speak so the crow will speak to you as well, you'll find. And they're funny uh, as well a lot of the time. Um, and lighthearted, even though you're going, it's usually about a dark space, which I love. So, um, and even, you know, but it's always, it can be a warning system to alert you to something happening on the outside, which is always related to something on the inside. Or it can just, she can just be warning you, alerting you, that it's time to look at something within. Um, you know, always for our own up leveling. So um, one of the things recently actually, because I work with her so much and, and now when the crow comes into my life in a, in a very big way, I'm, I'm always like my, I'm always aware, mindful. Like recently I was, um, I was out <clears throat> with, my my little daughter just outside our house i was waiting for my mum to arrive who was coming to mind her and and i said to my daughter oh let's go out and wait on the road for my mum to drive down and and, and literally as we went outside a, cr a huge crow landed at my feet beside me and my toddler um uh, like really persistent and started like squawking at me and i was like okay okay like the morgan is telling me something with warning warning it was so it was so strong and so powerful normally it's not really 
you know, it can be more subtle than that. But this day, um, the crow appeared to me like this. And then I found out I was, I was still waiting for my mom. I was kind of, I knew something was happening. So I rang my mom because she was a bit late and she had fallen, she'd hit her head. She was, <clears throat> she'd actually been unconscious for a second. When the, when the crow landed, that was the exact timing. I worked out she would have fallen and been unconscious and then she came to. And when I rang her and I was able to get to her in time, she had like a really bad head injury and she's fine now, thank God. But, but you know, and then there was always an inner piece to do around everything that happened. So, so yeah, you'll just start to work with the Morgan in that way. And, um, you know, as, 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 Really, what she guides us in doing, um, and on what we need, what we need to do with her, and why she's such a great guide, is, you know, just to be willing to go into that space that is calling us. Something is coming up for us. Just really, she guides me just on having the willingness to be present to it, to whatever it might bring. I mean, it sounds easier than it is, but really her gift is, you know, because so much when we go into wounding, depending on where we are or what the subject is, maybe it's a wound we've worked on a million times and, you know, it's coming up again and it's coming up again and it can be like, oh, I've worked on this so much. You can have a resistance to it. And sometimes we just need to go into it for a second to release it. It's just a tiny layer or sometimes it can be obviously something much, much deeper than that. But either way, it just requires willingness. So I always find that when she appears in my life um, or something is happening in my life, I call on her to be to be a guide with me. And she will literally like, you know, hold my hand in the darkness and um, not be afraid of of looking at anything. She has, you know, she's associated with the dark. She's been cast into a lot of dark spaces. And I feel that her gift is then being able to really look at those places and spaces with no fear and being able to just be in those places and spaces long enough that the resistance and the fear or whatever is coming up, the feelings around that can be felt so deeply, so presently and can be almost then burnt through um at which point that dark space when we're really willing to stay with it transforms into the womb into the cauldron of creation where that space before that would have paralyzed us or, or numbed us often we don't even know it's a dark space because we're just numb to it and we can't feel anything um that 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 has the ability to to totally shape shift into a space what held us kind of imprisoned can become like our blank black canvas of absolute potential because the cauldron is the womb space and that's really what the morgan always shows me she is representative of going into that that dark space where where we can get comfortable in like get comfortable in that uncomfortable place and get comfortable with the margin often the margin is a really uncomfortable presence like people will report that or even in a story it's like oh the margin arrived or you know um but always in that story she is pointing to the thing that needs to be seen she is pointing to the thing that needs to be looked at and it could be bloody could be gory it could be disgusting um and she's just there showing it like willing to to portray it um and she's also associated with prophecy in many of the stories so she is seen in many of the stories she will prophesize the uh, a battle or the ending or she'll prophesy a death by like washing bloody clothes or something quite um you know graphic 
and and that is also how you how I work with her sometimes you know like not being able I find sometimes going into dark spaces a lot of stuff can come up even if it's on the land if I'm you know a lot of stuff can come up that is that is not nice to look at and it's funny because it's the resistance to it that keeps you from from you know getting the pearl behind it um and it can it can that's when she is a guide for just getting really comfortable with like looking at whatever images come up being present to them fully present to them then they can just flow past you and you can really reach into into receiving the pearl of of that space and then you can start to create totally a new like um you know that is the power of the of the womb the power of the cauldron the power of the magic um the alchemy of transforming dark places that have held us paralyzed into into dark spaces of pure potential and power you know that's the irony is that these places and spaces are 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 the places we want to we want to run to we want to go to there lies our power and these are the places and spaces that would most often keep us from finding our power and it can be really subtle like the other night i was having such a dark night of the soul i was just having this physical thing happen to me that was so uncomfortable and and painful and i was guided by by the morgan um you know to just like i knew the practice like okay just get really present with the pain get so present that the pain isn't pain it's just a sensation um but as i was trying to go into it i felt like oh my nervous system had reacted from the pain so much that it was it was like holding me in this barrier from accessing the pain behind it accessing the real feeling that I was striving to get into I was willing to do the work but I found like my body was in this had had this reaction that my that was it was almost like my body was almost shaking actually and I knew I was on the precipice because I find like when we're on the precipice of going into the wound or going into the trauma that can be the place that really holds you back it's not actually going into the wound it's the it's the precipice of it and that's the point we often don't get into it or we bypass it. Um, and she was showing me really subtly. She was saying like, it's not, it's not, the, the pain isn't in the feeling you're trying to go into. The pain is the resistance to the feeling. And that was, it was the resistance, which was so subtle because I was like willing to go into it. And I know this practice, but it was the, the pain of the, the resistance, which was then causing all this drama in my body, causing like my nervous system to freak out. And because what it was trying to do was to keep me from accessing the truly going into that transformational space where I can receive that, the gift that lies within that. So she was, because I was like, I was like, oh, it's so pain, it's so painful. I, I don't want to go into it. That was what was happening for me, even though I was trying, but it was actually, she was like, no, it's your resistance to the pain that is causing this extra fear that is setting off your nervous system. So it was like a, it was like a, a created fear, um, which wasn't actually from the true fear that I was trying to go into, if that makes sense. It's just all these ways that our ego or whatever tries to keep us from accessing the power. Um, so, so when I was able to kind of relax with that and go, okay, then I was just able to go into it. And like, it is, it's amazing, like going into those, those places when you are fully willing, when you're fully surrendered, when you've gone through the initiation of, of, of what it took to get there. That space is so willing to transform 
for you. It is you. It's your magic. You know, the Morrigan is very associated with magic. Um, and this really is the inner alchemy that she is, a, is, a, is an amazing guide for. So, um, yeah, so I, I think that, you know, the Morgan as well is, 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 it's really, it's really, I really feel like she, this is a new time for her, um, to be seen in her truth. Um, so many, she's such a powerful figure that there's been so much association with her that then have also created these kind of phantom realities of of her and what she stands for and leads leads her character down these other paths of 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 of, of darkness you know um associated with death associated with battle like all these really negative things when really what she's associated with is magic transformation um the ability to to be with the dark so you receive that pearl of the light um that that is your own gift so really she's she's um a guide for excavating your inner inner earth of your body and retrieving those pearls so that you can bring them forth into your life and she's associated with prophecy so she's really here as a guide for us right now to help us um help us excavate and um discover our own prophecy our own part in this great prophecy that we're all taking part in our own our own role in that and because all of us have been through so much like you know so much distortion so much trauma so much pain these um sovereignty goddesses have witnessed this journey they've been on this journey they've been suppressed and buried with the whole divine feminine um attributes and suppression that has happened to everybody every 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 woman every man every being that has the, the because we all do have these parts this divine masculine divine feminine true aspects within us and these divine feminine aspects that have been abused that need to be retrieved in order to bring forth um our our gifts for this time so she's really just, um, you know, an epic guide um, for, you know, traversing and transforming the dark. So I really hope that you get to work with her in this way. Um, I used to have a resistance to working with her, even though she was really the first um, sovereignty goddess that came into my life in such a strong way, an undeniable way. She's been one of my most powerful guides um, because... I could also feel the distortion around her and I didn't resonate with it. And like even when I looked up stuff about her or read stuff, I just didn't resonate with anything. Then I was like, okay, I'm just going to connect with her myself. And, and I've always felt just the, the true love, um, devotion she has um, for humanity, for the earth, for a divine father, mother, God, and for assisting us on our path at this time. So I hope that was helpful and I look forward to talking to you again. I'm preparing a book on the Sovereignty Goddesses. So I'm just really um, sharing little snippets of what's coming out of that. And I'll see you soon.